Good morning, children. Uh, in the previous video, we have seen that the energy released during cellular respiration is immediately used to synthesize a molecule called as ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate and it is called as energy currency of the cell. Now, why is it called as energy currency of the cell? For this answer, we'll have to see something more about ATP. Now students, the process of aerobic respiration can be represented by the overall reaction like this. We all know that a glucose molecule gets oxidized to release carbon dioxide, water and energy. So this can be represented, glucose can be represented as C6H12O6. It is of 6 carbon molecule plus 6O2 gives 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O and a total amount of 686 kilocalorie heat energy is generated here from one mole of glucose. Now what happens? The energy liberated in the breakdown of the glucose molecule is not all in the form of heat but a large part of it is converted into chemical energy in the form of ATP which is a chemical substance and as we have discussed it is called as adenosine triphosphate. So uh, in uh, the process of respiration 686 kilo calorie heat energy is generated out of which a major part gets converted into ATP. So in the form of ATP we can represent the same above equation as follows. C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gives 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus 38 ATP is generated that is the chemical energy plus 420 kilocalorie heat energy. Now you can see out of this 686 kilocalorie of heat energy major amount has been changed into chemical energy and the rest heat energy is 420, 420 kilo calorie and the process of uh, breaking down a uh, particular type of enzyme works at each step. Now this conversion can be understood as follows one mole of ATP for the formation of one mole of ATP 7 kilocalorie of energy is required isn't it so for 38 uh, ATP molecules what happens 38 into 7 that is 266 kilocalorie energy will be consumed and the rest of the energy that is 686 that was the total amount of heat energy generated minus 266 because this much has been used for formation of ATP so what will be the rest amount 420 kilocalorie and that is here this much of the heat energy is actually produced after the formation of ATP and as we are talking about aerobic respiration so how much ATP will be uh, produced here formed here 38 ATP so this was all about the formation of ATP now whenever required this ATP is break down isn't it? it it is broken down into ADP ADP is adenosine diphosphate this is triphosphate this is diphosphate so when energy is required this ATP first gets broken down into adenosine diphosphate and this breaking process gives rise to a fixed amount of energy.
Now we can see here one ATP releases energy which is equivalent to 30.5 kilojoule per mole. Now energy released from ATP is used for driving various endothermic reactions taking place inside the cell. Now I hope you all understand endothermic reactions and exothermic reactions. Endothermic reactions are those reactions uh, which require energy, which consume energy and exothermic reactions are those reactions which liberate energy. So here we are talking about endothermic reactions. Um, uh, and some of the examples of endothermic reactions which consume energy of ATP is uh, the synthesis of proteins from amino acids, contraction of muscles for movement, conduction of electrical impulse in the nerve cell, production of <clears throat> new cells by cell division, etc. Now need for the production of energy is greater in animals as compared to plants. Why? The answer is so simple because uh, the animals consume more energy in doing physical work. Uh, we all know that animals show movement, show a lot of activities when compared to the plants. Now in case of plants for aerobic respiration um, also occurs, um, plants are living organisms so they do uh, have the process of respiration throughout their life and for this they require exchange of gases and you have read in the previous section that uh, uh, this, pro uh, this uh, exchange of gases uh, is served with the help of small pores present on the undersurface of the leaves called as stomata and this happens by which process this is called as diffusion and uh, the direction of diffusion depends on the uh, environmental conditions and the requirement of the plant. What is diffusion? Do you remember? Diffusion is the movement of substance from its higher concentration to its lower concentration till the equilibrium is achieved. Now what happens during daytime? Carbon dioxide generated during respiration is used up for photosynthesis. We all know that carbon dioxide is one of the raw materials for photosynthesis required by the plant. So uh, when, when during respiration carbon dioxide is released, uh, it gets used up for the process of photosynthesis during daytime. Hence there is no carbon dioxide release during this time and instead oxygen release is the major event at this time because photosynthesis uh, keeps on uh, going uh, keeps going on so oxygen and uh, oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis so during daytime the net release is of oxygen but what happens at night when there is uh, no photosynthesis occurring carbon dioxide elimination is the major exchange activity going on because uh, no photosynthesis takes place at that time in absence of uh, sunlight so uh, the, for, the plant does not use up uh, the carbon dioxide generated uh, or produced due, uh, due to respiration so carbon dioxide elimination will be the main event at night so children this was all about uh, the ATP generation production of ATP and the major events that occur uh, at night and during daytime in case of plants. In the next video, we will learn more about the uh, respiration in uh, terrestrial animals as well as in case of aquatic animals. So till then, goodbye.